In today's video, we'll be synthesizing amino guanidine bicarbonate with the hydrazine sulfate and the calcium cyanamide that we made in a previous video. Amino guanidine bicarbonate is very useful. It's used as a precursor for many different uh, guanidine derivatives, but in this case, we'll be using it to synthesize 5 amino tetrazole. Now let's get right into the synthesis. We pre-measure 3.9 grams of our hydrazine sulfate into a beaker. Then, to this, we add 2.8 grams of calcium cyanamide. And now we thoroughly stir. Now to a 50 milliliter beaker, we add 15 mils of distilled water. Now, we can turn up our heat to 45 degrees Celsius. This will be the temperature that we hold the reaction at. Now we can start adding our cyanamide and hydrazine sulfate mixture very slowly. We have to maintain a pH of between 9 and 9.5 the whole time. If not, it can quickly lead to a loss of yield, which we do not want. We can keep slowly adding the rest but we still have to maintain the pH of between 9 and 9.5, in my case it was around 9, and keep the temperature at 45 degrees Celsius. Every 5 minutes or so we should check the pH to see if it's at that level. It's very very difficult to see here, but there is a green color and it's around a pH of 9, the camera just can't pick it up. Now we can add our last couple scoops of the cyanamide and hydrazine sulfate mixture. Here, you can see the pH of 9 with a nice green color. Not shown here, we had to adjust the pH to 7 with some 50-50 sulfuric acid. This is for the next step when we turn the heat up. Now we can crank the heat all the way up to maintain a solid temperature of 85 degrees for one hour. Here we're checking the pH just to see if it stayed at 7. In this case, it did. The hour is almost up, but we still have to maintain the heat at 80 degrees Celsius with strong magnetic steering just to make sure everything reacts. Now we can turn off our heat and our stirring. Now we can filter. I had to use an extra 200 milliliters of hot, hot water just to make sure everything got through the filter. Uh, it was so viscous that it couldn't get it through on its own, but this water washing seemed to help. So not shown here, we had to adjust the pH to 6.5 just to prepare for the addition of the sodium bicarbonate. Now we can add our sodium bicarbonate into the amino guanidine solution, and this should neutralize the acid and form the bicarbonate salt of amino guanidine. Here you can see the color change between the amino guanidine bicarbonate solution and the really red amino guanidine solution we seen earlier. This is a really good indicator that it's working and now we can take it off our hot plate and let it chill for a couple hours to overnight. You can see this white precipitate at the bottom. This is our amino guanidine bicarbonate. It's fairly crude at the moment, but we can later recrystallize. But first we have to filter it. Here it is. Here's our amino guanidine bicarbonate. 